Today, we're looking at a green ink by KWZ, Iron Gall Green Gold. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that if you're only interested in certain parts, you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram, and if you're new here and like fountain pen ink reviews, I would invite you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Visconti Van Gogh with a medium nib. I wrote with it for a day and then took my notes with it. This first writing sample is done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper in order to have some kind of standardization to look at. There's additional writing samples later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, some a very nice shading throughout all of the writing. The extra fine is a little bit lighter, or sorry, a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading again, even nicer than we got with the stub. Six seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit darker than the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, there is some light shading throughout, more to the point of where it's lighter in certain areas, not getting darker that we often see. 10 seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine shows good color variation, medium shows none, although we do get some in both. Well, how about Tomoe River? Well, there's no bleeding, normal Tomoe River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 12 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 19 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation and there was none. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some shading throughout. Little bits, nice and subtle. Extra fine is just a little darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading throughout, peppering of darker letters in here. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine shows us some color variation and we do get that in the writing. The medium shows none and we got none. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is a very light brown at the bottom pushing its way up. We do see some of the green and yellows in there. Now, I actually don't believe that to be a green dye. I believe it more to be a mixing of yellow and blue. But it appears green with some yellows there. And at the very top, opposed to a blue, is a very nice turquoise. Now, the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And we see that that brown is really starting to form a line, starting to bond with the filter paper. It pushes its way up much lighter. Then we see some of the green and hints of yellow. And again, that turquoise blue. I'm falling back still on the idea that I don't see that as three colors, but two mixing even on the filter paper. This one, I let dry for 24 hours before I dunk it into water. And what we see is that line at the bottom is about the same as what we had with the last one, just a little bit darker. The brown tone is pushing its way up. We do see some of the yellow and some of the green still with that turquoise blue. So that's why I'm sticking with my, this is a yellow and blue makes green scenario, not a green dye scenario. This one, I let dry for 72 hours before I dunk it into water. Now, the line at the bottom looks the same after 72 hours than it did after 24. The ink itself, all of them, did not travel as far up the filter paper, and we're still seeing this whole, there's yellow and there's a turquoise, and that's what's giving us this great green. 
but the brown is moving up basically in the same way. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it's the capital H that makes me say I would not use this in a note-taking situation. Even though I can still read everything that's there, it's any amount of blowout makes me nervous about using it. Now, water is completely reactivating and lifting off the paper all of this ink, which is good because water is all that it took for me to get this out of my pen. Pen flush seems to be doing a little bit less than water did, but what I think that is is when I dabbed with the paper towel, I held it there for a moment, and I sort of held some of the ink in place while it dried. One third bleach solution completely removes it from the paper, but there's no need for you to use that to get it out of your pen. I test viscosity or flow with a tilt test that I'll link down below in a description or in a card. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. KWZ's Iron Gall Green Gold has a viscosity of 2.13, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper. I average those. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. KWZ's Iron Gall Green Gold has an average dry time of 11 seconds, making this a fast drying ink. Instead of finding inks that look like KWZ's Iron Gall Green Gold, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with an ice red and chose Private Reserve's Fiesta Red. The second writing sample is done on black and red, Franklin Kristoff, and Limone paper. Here we're looking at black and red notebooks. Now we get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading in this writing. With a much more absorbent paper, that's impressive. The extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, very nice shading again, better shading here than here, five seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, although we get a ton in the extra fine. Franklin Kristoff, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, some a decent amount of shading up there. It could be more, but it's not bad being a more absorbent paper. Extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some a very nice shading. Seven seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, eight seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine shows color variation, far left to far right. We do get it. The medium shows none, and we got none. And Limone paper. Now, we do get some bleeding. No real ghosting. We do get bleeding spots that are occurring. They're not all the way through. They're not touching the next page. They would stop me from using the back of the page. It does lead to a minor ghosting, but not the end of the world. And that was all with the medium, not the extra fine. The 1.1 stub has no feather spread, halo sheen. It has spots of shading that are happening. The extra fine is just a tad darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. Nice shading in here, especially for this paper. Five seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. Eight seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine does show some color variation left to right. We did get some. The medium shows none and we got None. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of KWZ's Iron Gall Green Gold? While I don't see the gold, this goes down for me as one of the best greens that KWZ is putting out in their Iron Gall series. It's truly fantastic. And the shading that you get, awesome. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? I found medium to dry pens really allowed the shading to come through and look fantastic, where a wet pen put much more ink down and drowned out all the shading, and I didn't appreciate that. I do new ink reviews every single day, so if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.